guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mystique and this is Skeleton 101. This episode we're going to talk about teen trials. Now, while the pandemic is changing a lot of plans and changing the layout of what 2020 was supposed to look like, it may may not affect how our season is going to look. But I'll give you some insight about my experiences so you can have some idea what to expect when the time comes. Back 2017, going into the Olympic year, um, my first teen trials... First half was in Calgary, second half was in Lake Placid. Never been to Calgary, never really studied it, looked at it because I wasn't really expecting it. And it was terrifying in the sense that I did not prepare and I got my ass kicked a lot. I crashed quite a bit. I lost my sled a couple times too. But that's on me because I didn't study. Now, take it back over to Lake Placid. Back in more familiar territory, kind of know what I was doing. Still sucked, didn't do that great, but it is what it is. After Olympic year, whole team trials is in Lake Placid. It's three races. So getting more practice at my home track, which was good for me. Push was getting better. My push improved every year. Like every year team trials, it's starting to like, it drops time kind of thing. Sometimes the nationals will come up too, but every year it's like, I've been like, okay, drop, drop. Dropping time at the start, driving. Driving improves like a little bit, but like it's kind of like meh. And it's very inconsistent. So it was kind of like, I get there, I'm getting the rust. But the problem is, is we have maybe like a week, week and a half or so before we race. So it's kind of one of those things where like, it's very evident if you're not preparing. I was not preparing. I did not take things that seriously. Like the preparation part. I did, I wanted, I always wanted to do better. I always want to improve that, but I didn't do the preparation. So same thing. You know, no wrecks and all like that, but like I, meh. Those previous team trials, I spent the last month of like my actual summer training, physical training, um, hammering watching video, hammering, like imitating laying on a sled. So I laid on the edge of my bed and I really focused on going through stairs. So Dan worked with me uh, and actually the first time he's like, just lay on the mattress and show me what you're doing. And I'm like, mm -mm -mm, you know, going through my thing. And he's like, why are you doing that? And I'm like, what do you mean? Why are you doing that right there? I was like, isn't that what you're supposed to do? No, you're not. And I was like, oh, well, this is what I've been doing the whole time. So this is probably explaining a lot of stuff. So we go through the whole track and pretty much that's, a, that's the entire like diagnosis. Like you don't know what you're doing. Not necessarily you don't know what you're doing, but like you're doing it wrong and you're not conscious of what, so. We spent a good bit of time watching video, practicing, getting a feel, and understanding correlation of movement and stuff like that. And really focusing on putting that, like balancing that out versus like, I know this is happening here, but this is what I'm gonna do. So it's more of, instead of just going with the concept of what's supposed to happen and what I'm supposed to do, actually feeling it and watching it. Now, obviously, now there's no ice here, my apartment. So you have to go over your notes and look at the notes and find similarities, find the differences and see, okay, in this eye condition, this is what I did, this is what I noted, but in this eye condition, this is what happened. So using that knowledge, going back, like normally in the beginning of the season, ice usually is kind of finicky because it's usually w warmer. And when it's warmer, the ice conditions are a little bit, you know, either they can be even frosty. The mental preparation, tenfold change. Got the team trials. Drop my start, but like I dropped it. It was sub 520. It was like 517. I think I, I would have moments where I would drop my downtime a little bit, you know, here and there, but it was inconsistent. It was really inconsistent. I literally, between two heats, I had like a, a one and a half second difference. Not good. So naturally I did not make that tour or make national team, but that's my own fault. So that's me. I worked on mental preparation, but I didn't work on the race preparation. So got to put two and two together and make that shit work. I say this because I never full ran for team trials before, but my teammates, the ones that I came up with, like initially from rookie camp, a couple of them have. And pretty much what happens is it's same as training any other day. And I think that's something that some new people kind of get really caught up in. It's like, oh my gosh, it's a race. Like, no. Well, yes, it is a race, but you are in a better position as a new person because there's no pressure on you. You just do what you're doing. You keep working on what you're working. I keep doing what you're doing. The only difference is the ice is 
probably better, you know, than just regular training. So the pressure's off of you. You're the first ones down. You kind of tell us what the grooves are doing. You tell us what the ice is doing. And you come back up and report back to the top, the officials, and then you keep going. The biggest thing I want to stress is this is not a stressful situation for you. This is not a stressful environment for you. You're going to see everyone else sweating bullets maybe or, you know, stressing out trying to or thinking about things and talking about stuff that you're not going to understand. And that's okay because you're not at that level yet. Right now you're at the level of trying to get in the zone of what it feels like to be in this type of environment. But maintaining a calm, cool, collective, you know, attitude. This is great for you. I, I, like this is one of those things where it's like it's one of the best case scenarios. As a forerunner and you're coming up, um, your expectations are obviously you show up earlier to the track to make sure your setup is ready because you're one of the first ones down. That's a given. Um, the star list is already getting punched up. The coaches, the like you know officials are already going to have it all organized for you. It's just literally regular practice. You're just coming in a little earlier. And just having fun pretty much. You want to come up and just be able to experience it and just kind of take in what's happening. On the day of the race, you don't have to worry about the whole park for May thing. You don't have to worry about the weight thing. I mean, you could do it too, just to kind of make sure you just kind of be in stride with everybody. Race day, your responsibilities are, depending on how many foreigners are, you're going to be sent down in sets. You're going down, but you you have a job now. You Obviously at the top, the coaches are looking at how you get on the sled and if the groove is pulling anyway. So when you are at the top, you're kind of, you're running and you just kind of just jump on neutral. You're not trying to drive yet. You want to stay still and just go through until you hit curve one. And then once you get out of that, then you can do, go back to driving or whatever you're doing. But the biggest thing is your role is to really help athletes and coaches understand what's happening with the ice. And that's obviously within our control. And then once you go down and through the track and everything, it's obviously because you're new, we're not expecting you to know everything all the time um, or be able to pick point certain things out. But there might be something like you notice, like, hey, like I noticed that there was a bump here or I noticed that something was off here, whatever. And then usually if you say that, the radio will track remember to check it out and make sure it's okay and such is life, you know, to keep going. But it's a pretty simple thing. Like there's no need to put any extra pressure, any strain on yourself. This is just another form of practice for you. Now, obviously, like, you want to do well. You want to focus on things that you're working on and things that you talked with your coach and be able to have a good experience for yourself and be able to be in a position to succeed and progress within your career as a skeleton athlete. But by no means, don't put any extra stress on yourself for no reason. There's no need for that. You want to have fun. You want to be able to, you know, have a good experience here. So with that in mind, like, you know, just make sure if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. Ask veteran athletes, ask coaches, ask other members or former sliders, like whatever you, like, you know, there's nothing that's, there's no dumb question. And if anyone tells you the dumb question, then they're an asshole. You know, like, don't worry about that because at the end of the, you're new. It's not expected that you're just going to know these things. Now, these videos are supposed to help you. So if you refer to that, I'll, you know, I'll be, I'll be flattered if you watch this and be like, hey, I watched your video. Can you expand on this? Like, of course. Thanks for watching. But my whole point of making these videos is to make sure that you guys have a smoother transition coming into the sport and not kind of coming in blind. Um, I came in blind and uh, there's a lot of a lot of things I wish I knew so I could have done it differently. Save me some money, save me some stress, save me some mental strain. But hey, you learn and you learn and you pass on the knowledge. That's what you're supposed to. So I share my knowledge with love because I want you to succeed. I want you to do well. I want you to have a good experience and I don't want you to feel like you are in a position to fail. Thank you guys for tuning into this episode of Skeleton 101. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this one, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments or concerns, you can definitely leave a message in the comments below or reach out to me on social media and send me a DM. This is definitely an open line of communication. I want you to be successful or if you just want any questions about Skeleton, slider or not, let me know. I will be happy to answer them to the best of my abilities. And if I don't know the answer, I will find the answer for you. But all this advice and this experience that I'm sharing, I share out of love because I want you to do well and I want you to have a great experience here. Again, much love. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more episodes.